Hey, welcome to Live with Dr. Ken. Thank you for joining us again. Check out all the back uh, stories and all the other stuff on visible.edu. We are here to talk about music because music is important. And I'm here with my good friend, Lauren Thomas. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started to make a couple jokes that would just make us have to start over. So instead of doing that, let's just go into like, I have a lot of questions for you today. We're, today we're going to talk about worship. Okay. And um, I know you got, you know, an important worship degree from an important school. Yes. We'll talk about that at yes. some point. <laughs> um, but uh, why don't you tell me sort of when you started doing um, worship? So, fun fact, Kyle Holder, who just, he's an alumni and just started working for the certificate program. Um, he's actually the one who got me leading worship. Yeah, okay. um, so, he was my youth worship leader at the time and he was kind of didn't have people and was like Lauren you should sing and I was that very shy but loved to sing human oh, <laughs> and I was cool. like yeah um, and so he got me doing it um, so that's how it started and then him and my dad convinced me to start playing guitar and then that kind of cultivated <laughs> so wow. then I started doing it together well wow. so and Kyle is now on staff at Visible Music College yes come full circle that's, yeah that's cool. it was so weird because like he left and came back and then now we work together yeah that's <laughs> awesome. like, this is so strange so uh, so when you were just this you know just a little more on that singing and worship leading how when did you sort of realize hey singing is not worship leading I is not fully worship leading right? yeah so, yeah I man I don't really know I kind of so he ended up leaving and it all got thrown to me and put in my hands. Mm. <laughs> and I feel like at that time I started to realize that it wasn't just getting up and singing songs. There's a lot of work that goes into it, like knowing what the songs are saying and knowing how easy or difficult they are so your team mm -hmm. can play them. Also like how to lead your, your team and stuff. And so I think I started to realize that after he kind of left, because um, it was in my hands and I kind of had to, I was just throwing it. And so okay. I just kind of had to like figure it that out. That happens a lot to people, so this <laughs> um, is right on target. Yeah, and so I really just kind of like started asking for help and figuring things out. And then when I came here, I realized I thought I knew stuff and I knew nothing um, okay. <laughs> compared yeah. to what Dr. Johnson showed us and taught us. And so at first I was like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I had no clue what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to so. dig a little deeper on that. It's fun. Uh, fun fact. What is something that you thought this is for sure? I've got this down, and then Dr. John. Oh, man. I thought, like, picking songs and all that stuff, like, I knew how to do it. But I never realized, like, I have to keep my congregation in mind. So, like, my church yeah, yeah. is mostly white people. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, I never had to think about at school leading, like, we're a diverse school. Right. So he was like, you have to do gospel music. You have to do some Hispanic music. You have to do some of your hymns, all of that. And I was like, I had never thought about that. I was like, yeah. you have to really think about the people you're leading. <laughs> and I was like, wow. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, my mind was blown. <laughs> That's cool. Um, Did he ever talk to you about, um, the message of the day coordinating with because he was the, he's the speaker a lot yeah, of times. Yeah, he did. And he did. So, um, that was something that I was doing a little bit before um, my youth pastor or like the pastor of our church would talk to me like, hey, um, this is kind of the focus, kind of go with that. <laughs> and okay. I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, that works. Um, so we learned a little bit about that because yeah. um, it's definitely like part of it and helps. But it wasn't one of those things that I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of figured that yeah, out. Because yeah. <laughs> it kind of helps everything flow together better. Yeah. Um, so this question, just off the top of my head, um, what about um, writing music for worship? You have written yeah. some songs. I have. How does that feel? Or is that, well, how that start it's coming It's so about? surreal. No, I really... I've been told for the longest time I was going to write music and I never did it. And then one of Dr. Johnson's classes required us to write a song. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I wrote it and after that I realized I really like have a heart to write what God's putting like in okay. me or in the times where I just sat at my guitar and just would worship. He's like, those are songs that I'm giving you. Um, so I started hmm. writing them down. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have also learned for church writing, like it's congregational. So I really try 
because a lot of times in my quiet time it's more personal yeah. and so if I'm work, like writing for the church I try to be intentional and write like congregationally so like we or together like because right, right. we're all here so yes like the individual part's important but as a church we're that's all good. coming together and that's again something Dr. Johnson was like you need to know what your songs are saying because yes right. like we're here together but you're singing about me or just just God you're doing this in me and I'm like yeah he can do that in all of us but he's like right. what about the congregational songs we don't have enough of them and we really don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's not a lot of songs that talk about we or we're coming together acknowledging you're right he is. you're right just, I've noticed the same thing <laughs> yeah. written a couple songs myself off of just hey let's just gather together exactly like, well you know I actually noticed from this is what goes way back um, well, I can't think of the song now, but it's it's, mm -hmm. it's so far back. But it was like it would play everywhere all the time. I was mm -hmm. like, there must not be enough of these songs. If you hear a song too often, yeah, there must not be enough of them. Yeah. So let's, yeah. you know, good good let's little have more good little clue, right? <laughs> right. Instead of complaining about the most common song, write one yeah. like it because we need more like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you wrote on what keyboards or guitar? What's your instrument? Um, guitar, you? definitely okay. guitar. Now I. My instrument would be my voice. I like. I prefer to sing, oh. <laughs> um, but playing an instrument helps in writing. Um, and I wrote all of them on my guitar, but yeah. like progression-wise, but melody-wise, it was easier to find it with front of a keyboard. Oh, okay. Um, at least for me. Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. that I've started writing more, I usually sit at my guitar. But at first, it was a mixture of both. Okay, that's cool. Well, it's good to be able to do both. I think as a worship leader, yeah, to know what people are. It's for some reason it, you get a different song if you sit at the keyboard mm -hmm. or if you sit at the guitar. It can completely like, change it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Um, so, what's your planning process as a worship leader? What do you? Do yeah. You plan on the so I actually plan on a month in advance. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy, um, but it helps my musicians to practice and have their music at that time. Um, and you not hurt them. Yeah, yes. yeah, because <laughs> I feel like something I definitely learned while being a student was like you want to prepare your musicians the best you can. So giving them mm -hmm. minute or giving them music last minute is not kind. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. kind of it's That's inconvenient, true. and then it's like you want them to come in prepared, but it's like we've had only a couple of days to practice, and we all work, and so I right. am very big on getting it done at a month at a time. Um, That's cool. And so when I do that, I usually pray over it and I ask God where we're going. I know what the sermon series is for that month. Okay. Um, and then I kind of go from there and I have a repertoire <laughs> that I look at and it has the keys of every song saying who's led it. And so I go through and look at that okay. um, and kind of build it from there. And I'll usually introduce one new song a month. I don't like to do a lot of new songs because yeah. your congregation had, takes a while for them to learn new songs. And so yeah. throwing a new song at them every week is like, it's not okay. In my right. opinion, it's yeah, not right. okay. Because you want them to learn it. Um, and so that's my process of like forming my that's set cool. list. Um, and then when it comes to like leading, I usually have my order of how I want the songs. Um, but then I'll also like, the more time I spend with them, the more I know like the flow, if that makes sense, yeah. where the spirit moves, um, kind of. And so I'll tell my team, I'm like, hey, stick on this progression like in practice. So I'm more, there's lots of spontaneous parts, but yeah. I prepare my team, because my team's okay. all volunteers. Um, That's what I was gonna and so next. they're yeah. all volunteers. And so yeah. if I just start going somewhere, they get lost and it's a big muddy mess. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'll usually spend time like cultivating that in my own time practicing with those songs and so at practice I'll be like this is the order here's this progression and so yeah. let's have a few minutes where we just sit on this progression and I'll show you I might go into this song or I might do okay. this so they have an idea now when it comes to it I could completely change it but they have the progression right, right. They're so they're scared. prepared yeah. Yeah, yeah and so for me I try my best to stick to the structure mm -hmm. but if I move or I feel the spirits like hey start on the chorus I'll start on the chorus and then we'll go to the top of the song and I'll do it all the way through. And okay. then I'll kind of, at the end of the song where I, is where I do more like free, yeah, okay, yeah. just stay right here and we'll just kind of worship and see what God says or what God gives us to sing. And you say that, you actually say something like that on the microphone, like leading the congregation? Yeah, I'll be okay. like, hey, just sing your own song or come on guys, let's praise. And then I, I'm still working on this. <laughs> it's hard to get people that 
haven't been trained to do it, but having my singers do it as well, like, hey, sing out your own song while I'm singing my own song. Okay, like, yeah. like, do that. Or, hey, I'm giving praise, so you guys give praise too. Right, um, right. Because if the people don't see you do it, then they won't do it. That's, um, I was going to ask you that. So, like, when you're when you're preparing and you're listening for where the Spirit's going to go and you're mm-hmm. doing, you are, you are worshiping. Yeah. In that, in that moment with yourself. And then when you have the team together, mm-hmm. you're asking them to worship yeah. with you, right? Mm-hmm. Not just, hey, play these numbers. Yeah, no. You know. No, I've been blessed with a great team. They all like have servant hearts and love to worship. And so it's been really okay. nice because <laughs> it's not like, hey, we're here to play and we want all the attention. They're, they're right, not here right. for that. They're here because like they want to play. And like some of them, everybody's their talents different, <laughs> their level of yeah. knowledge of music. And so it's it's really great because everybody, we're a good team. We all help each other out. And That's where cool. the weakest link is, someone else is like, hey, let me help you. <laughs> and cool. it's really good. <laughs> so people are, they're progressing musically. They're actually yes. getting better all the yes. time. Yes, yes, Yeah, that's cool. But it's only because like we're all working together. It's no, nobody's yeah. like, I'm here because I want the attention. That's where That's it's good. like difficult. Yeah. So what about if you um, do all the planning and you're worshiping? Mm-hmm and your team's worshiping, you're ready, mm-hmm. and everything goes well acoustically, yeah. soundboard, everything's normal, and then the congregation's not worshiping. Yeah, those are the hardest moments. <laughs> I hate those moments. There's not like, the. it's so hard. I think for me, as the worship leader and as the team, you can't get discouraged. Um, I think that's a big thing is like you can't let their response discourage you and you can't let their response dictate what your response is going to be. Okay. Um, so you can't get discouraged yeah. <laughs> and then you also still have to respond. Um, so for me, it's like I will still as the facilitator, like if I'm leading the song, I'll be like, come on guys, let's lift our hands or sing this with me. I'll still encourage them. Yeah. Now it's their option, Even if decision. You, know not, you kind of know they're not going to yeah. do it, but you just yeah. follow through because like, God's Yeah, because you've been that. there and they're really not going to... I've always been told that whatever your energy is at, they're only going to meet like a third of it, okay. which is true. Yeah. Um, and so if we're not on point, even if they're not like worshiping or responding, we still have to be on point. We still have, mm-hmm. We can't let that dictate how we're going to worship. And so I have tried my best to like put in my team like hey yes they seem dead but we're gonna keep <laughs> worshiping and we're gonna keep encouraging them and we're not gonna let that dictate our response because God can still move even if they're choosing yeah. not to respond or sometimes like it might seem like it's a cold room and they're actually I, getting I something that happen. yeah because like people come up yeah. after you like really Cause, like my brother actually isn't very res- like a responsive worshiper but it's crazy because I'll talk to him because he just usually stands there or sits there and he'll he'll sing along but you can it just seems like he's disconnected right but then when you talk to him afterwards he's like oh yeah God was saying this to me and I'm like you look so <laughs> bored. <laughs> like you did right, not want right. to be here, but God is still like moving. That's good. Um, that's good. So that's kind of how I go about the cold room. It's like you just yeah. got to keep going, pushing through. So what What about talent? Um, uh, this is the last question. What, what about <laughs> talent and worship together? Mm. Like how do you, um, you already said you're looking for, you, you know, or you appreciate sort of yeah. like the amateur musicians and those kind of things, but they come with some skills. Mm. Um, what do you think? Well, you know, let me ask you outside of your own experience. Like, what do you think your philosophy? Mm. How does talent and worship come together? Mm. That's so hard. So, what's the best way <laughs> for talent and worship to come together? I again really think it just comes from where your heart is. Okay. So, if you don't have that servant heart, and it's because it's not about you. <laughs> so, you can be a great musician and. It's, it's not about you. <laughs> you can have <laughs> a great, you can be a great musician, yeah. but if your heart isn't there, it's like, why are you up there? Because it's not about you. And so yeah. that's been something, as someone that's graduated, playing with people that know how to play, and then yeah. having my team that is great, but they're not professional musicians, and I have to kind of guide them and teach them and help them. It's difficult, but I've learned mm-hmm. That I'd rather have them than some professionals yep. because their heart's in the right spot. That's good. And I think you, me personally, I would rather have people that have a heart of worship and want to worship the Lord versus people that know what they're doing and just be there for a paycheck. Yeah. I'm like, I want you to be up there because you like worshiping and you want God to move. Um, yeah. Now, it is great when you have someone that's a professional and yeah. has that heart. Both, yeah. Um, but. Awesome. 
it's not seen as much, at least for me. It's a yes. little bit harder to find. Um, yeah. But yes. that's more what it is for me. It's like that yeah, heart. Where's your good. heart at? That is one of the reasons we started Visible Music mm -hmm. College was uh, just bringing together people that want to grow in their skill, mm -hmm. but also within that Christian community and with discipleship, that focus, you know, like it, that it, the, in the hope that it is possible mm -hmm. for like very yeah. good musicians to be very dedicated to the Lord and to be ready for worship. Um, and, you know, because of their hearts, the right place. So, mm -hmm. um, well, thank you so much, yeah. Lauren. Um, Lauren is the leader of visible worship here on campus and housing coordinator and does all kinds of things, keeps things <laughs> rolling. Really appreciate you coming on the show with us. Thank you for joining us at Live with Dr. Ken. Check out visible.edu and all our social media stuff because there's amazing talent all around and we will see you next time.